Hi, let's study the remote method invocation commonly known as RMI for parallel and distributed systems. RMI is it allows the remote method calls. It is based on the remote procedure calls. The objects in different programs can communicate over here. Method calls appear same as those in the program. It was developed in 1980s. Now, a detailed information of what is RMI. It allows procedural programs like C to call functions on another program. It performs networking and marshalling of data. Now, what do you mean by marshalling of data? Marshalling of data means it is transferring the data structure used in remote procedure calls from one address space to another address space. So this will help me to transfer my data structure from one address space to another when I'm communicating on a remote network. Interface definition language is required to describe the function as without those interface language, we will not be able to communicate with a remote network. RMI is Java's implementation of RPC which is a remote procedural call. Now a general approach for executing computations remotely is my is the basic necessity of RMI. It is an object oriented version of remote procedure call where we have only procedures and functions which are passed from one client to the server over a network. Here it is an object oriented approach where the classes and methods are also passed between the remote objects. An approach that provides a remote communication between the applications using two objects stubs and skeleton. These are the two major things which plays an important role in RMI. We will see how the stubs and skeleton play an important role in RMI. RMI consists of three layers importantly the stub and the skeleton layer that is the client side we have stubs which are proxies and server side we have skeletons which communicate because our processes do not communicate with each other directly they communicate through stubs and skeletons the next layer is a remote reference layer and the last one is the transport layer we'll see how these layers communicate with each other this is a diagram. I have a client side application here and a server side application here. This is known as a part of an application layer. The remote method can be invoked by referring to a remote object. That is, this particular method will be invoked when I am referring to a remote object. It is exported through the server application and a remote client by either looking at the object name in the registry or by checking the value returned from the remote method. So when I am activating this, I have to check the registry. Now, this application can communicate to my, <coughs> to my server side application is using a stub. Now what is a stub? Stub is again, this is again a proxy. It is a remote object that is referenced by the object which is trying to send a message but it cannot send the message directly over the network so it sends a copy to the stub the client interacts only with the stub the stub is responsible for handling the data between the remote and the local so this stub then sends the message to the remote reference layer and this remote reference layer is a stream oriented layer and then comes my transport layer which is a connection layer so data will be transferred from the stub to remote reference layer then the transport layer and then the skeleton comes on the server side where it interacts and skeleton is responsible for handling the various methods classes and data and it interacts with the actual objects on the server side. So this is the basic flow structural diagram of my RMI how the client and the server applications interact with each other using the stub and the skeleton. So these three layers are known as the RMI system.
Now we'll see in detail how each layer works. Now what is a stub? A stub is an object which acts as a gateway for the client side. So it is a stub over here. It acts as a gateway from the client side. All the outgoing requests are routed through it. So client cannot directly interact with the server. It has to pass through this proxy. It resides at the client sides and represents the remote object. A stub for remote object is a client side proxy for the remote object. A stub implements all the interfaces that are supported by the remote object implementation. So whatever I have to implement from here, so prox stub will act as a proxy and it will act as a interface. Now this is the complete steps which will happen from stub side. So client side stub is responsible for initiating a call to the remote object by calling the remote reference layer so it will pass on the message from stub to the remote reference layer so it will initiate the call these are the basic steps for rmi which i have divided into the steps of stubs skeleton ref remote reference layer and transport layer so all these steps when they combine together they form the steps of rmi so the first step is initiating a call to the remote object so it initiates a call over here. Marshalling arguments to a marshal steam. As I said, marshalling arguments means it is transferring the data structure used in the remote procedure call from one address space to another. So it puts everything into the marshal stream, which is obtained from the remote reference layer. So my marshal stream will be created over here. Informing the remote reference layer that the call should be invoked. So when it passes the message, the call should be invoked. That message comes to remote reference layer. Unmarshalling the return value or exception from a marshal stream because it needs to now pass it on to the skeleton. So it has to unmarshal it. Informing the ref remote reference layer that a call is complete. When it has to unmarshal, then it tells that the call is complete because when it has to come back, it has to unmarshal my values. Now what is a skeleton? Skeleton is an object that acts as a gateway for the server side. Stub was acting as a gateway for the client side. So skeleton is over here. It acts as a gateway for the server side. All the incoming requests are routed through it. There it was outgoing. Here it is incoming. When the skeleton receives the incoming request, it does the following task. It reads the parameter from the remote of method. So it starts reading the method, whatever comes from the remote reference layers. It invokes the method on the actual remote object and it writes and transmits the result to the caller. So which is a caller? Caller is the client side. So here, whatever is done, it invokes the method to the actual remote object, continuously works on it, writes it, transmits the complete data structure from one address space to another. When the skeleton receives the incoming request, it does the following task. Previous slide, we saw the outline structure. This is the detail structure. It reads the parameter from the remote method. It invokes the method on the actual remote object. It writes and transmits the marshal, the result to the caller. Then after it has finished the result to the caller, it unmarshalling the arguments from the marshal stream, making the up call to the actual remote object implementation so implementation will be done over here marshalling the return value of the call or an exception if one has occurred onto the marshal stream so all the exceptions will also be recorded onto the marshal stream that is all the data structure that the remote object is using from one address space to another address space now what is a remote reference layer which comes over here the remote reference layer deals with the lower level transport interface. It's responsible for carrying out the specific remote reference protocol, which is independent of the client server and server skeleton. So whatever the protocol is implemented over here, it is irrespective of the stub and the skeleton. It is independent of the two. Each remote object implementation chooses its own remote reference subclass that operates on its behalf. Various invocation protocols can be carried out at this particular layer. 
so the transmission happens the communication happens between the stub and the skeleton is through the remote reference layer it is a unicast point to point invocation invocation to replicated object groups support for a specific replication strategy support for the persistent reference to remote objects and it has a reconnection strategies this is the point these are the point which says what is the need of a remote reference layer it is a point to point invocation because as my stub passes the message over here it has to communicate back to the skeleton so it is a point to point invocation it is replicated for each object group it has a replication strategy and enabling activation of the remote object if remote object becomes inaccessible then the reconnection strategies are also designed at the remote reference layer now what is a transport layer the last part the last layer for rmi the transport layer of rmi is responsible for setting up connection to remote address spaces managing all the connections monitoring the connection and its liveliness it cannot go dead listening for all the incoming calls because when the stub gives an outgoing call process and there's a call which is coming the transport layer cannot be quiet it has to listen to all incoming calls and the connections have to be live and it has to manage all the connection it manages a table of remote objects that resides in its address space setting up connection for all the incoming call is the most important part of the transport layer locating the dispatcher for the target of the remote call and passing the connection to this dispatcher so dispatcher plays an important role for the transport layer when there is an incoming call the connection is live the remote calls are at place then it dispatches that particular data dispatches the particular series of functions and protocols to the skeleton let's see the rmi how it actually works after going through these layers of client application stubs rrr rrl that is remote reference layer transport layer skeleton and server application layer so this is a client side and this is a server side i have an object a a proxy for b is created over here and a remote reference model these two are the remote reference model of client side and server side now there's a communication module which happens between the two so from my client side i give a request now this is a request which happens when the stubs come into picture the remote reference layer comes into picture over here and the transport layer comes into picture we've seen how these three communicate with the steps it creates and mar starts marshaling of data and the argument communicates with the server side the skeleton and the dispatcher for the bees class is created over here that is a proxy for b was there on the client side and the remote object b is here where it needs to communicate once it has communicated and remote side server application is finished the reply is sent back to the client side again through the transport layer remote reference layer by unmarshaling of data to the stub and to the client side now this is a more detailed diagram for rmi this is machine a this is machine b this is a local object so it is referred to as o1 this is a remote object referred to as o2 i need to communicate between the two there's a local reference l1 which is created it is a client code with rmi to server at c so proxy this is my stub now this stub what happens it passes the message to the reference layer remote reference layer here the remote reference layer creates a copy remote invocation with l1 and r1 as parameters this is a remote reference which was created which needs to be passed to the remote object new local reference will be created over here for skeleton for the server code implementation so a skeleton is created which is again a dummy module for the transport layer and copy of r1 to o2 is sent that is my remote reference is sent once it is implemented on the machine side it comes back to my server code implementation and the result goes back to my machine so my transport layer and remote reference layer comes into picture over here where i'm communicating between the two so this is how we see that remote method invocation is an implementation of remote procedural call and how it transports data between machine a and machine b on the remote side thank you